So AMD has decided to release the Radeon RX 7900 GRE globally starting on February 27th onwards at the price of 549 US dollars. The GRE model, also known as the Golden Rabbit Edition, is supposed to be exclusively for the China market last year to compete against the GeForce RTX 4070. However, Nvidia has already replaced it with the RTX 4070 Super, so AMD's global release for the Radeon RX 7900 GRE is somewhat awkward at this point. Still, We've compared it against both the RTX 4070 and 4070 Super just to find out what this card is capable of. This right here is the Sapphire Pulse RX 7900 GRE, one of the models you can get from the board partners that features a triple fan cooler. Now for the power requirement and PBP or total board power, MD recommends a 700 watts power supply for this model and it has a rated PBP of 260 watts. You can still power the card with a 650 watt power supply as long as you know what you are doing. This card still uses two PCIe 8 pin connectors, of course, which makes it compatible with older power supplies, unlike the 12 watt power header which NVIDIA now enforces on its newer GPUs. As for the display output options, it has two DisplayPort and two HDMI, which can be very useful to users who need more than one HDMI ports for their system. For the test, we are using the following list of hardware under an NVIDIA temperature of 28 degrees Celsius. You can refer to the list somewhere around here for your reference. While the 7900 GRE was intended for 1440p gaming as according to AMD, it is actually capable of 4K gaming and it's able to achieve more than 60 FPS on majority of the titles we have tested. Well, except for those that's very demanding like Alan Wake 2 and Cyberpunk. In Watchdog Legion, the high memory capacity does help a lot and we can see a very decent 72 fps on average and 62 fps on the 1% low, easily beating both the RTX 4070 and 4070 Super. Scaling down to 1440p, despite all the cards tested can easily achieve more than 80 fps in all the titles tested, the 7900 GRE can be seen performing better than both the Nvidia counterparts most of the time. It is about 8 to 10% better than the 4070 Super in terms of performance. Similar patterns can be seen in 1080p as well, but performance difference between the 7900 GRE and 4070 Super is slightly higher this time, averaging at 13 to 15% in the titles tested. And moving on to the ray tracing performance, it is almost certainly that NVIDIA is going to have an upper hand in this test. What we have done here is just to show how taxing some titles can be even though they are all equipped with the ray tracing features alongside FSR. For titles with FSR 3, we'll leave that out for now as we only wanted to see the raw ray tracing performance. At 4K resolution, we struggle with cyberpunk in area with denser population and during fights. Meanwhile, Alan Wake 2 is pretty much unplayable with ray tracing set to the highest. Though the rest of the titles tested are still somewhat playable, much to our surprise. The overall situation gets much better as we scale down to 1440p as most of the titles are actually playable with more than 60 fps now except for Alan Wake 2 which only averaged at 43 fps alongside some random lags as we navigate through the environment. All the titles are very playable at 1080p. 
but the overall visual experience will not be as good as what you get on the higher resolution. So is that it from AMD? Well, not quite. Despite not having as many titles that support frame gen like what we can see on the GeForce cards, we can now see more titles that actually comes with FSR3 support that is on its way, which is actually benefiting not only the Radeon cards, but also all the GeForce cards that doesn't get DLSS3 frame generation features. Although, I can still see people talking about frame gen being the fake performance boost. There are also people that started to accept the idea of having these artificially generated frames to boost the overall performance. It is never a feature that is perfect to begin with, but both sides, be it Nvidia or AMD, are working on improving the feature and hopefully reducing the occurrence of those artifacts that many of us saw in some of these artificially generated frames. If the game that you are playing actually has this feature and you can enable it, just give it a try first, judge later. Now here comes the part that might concern some users, the power draw and thermals. Unsurprisingly, the higher performance on the RX 7900GRE has a higher recorded power draw than both the 4070 and 4070 Super, which is at 200 watts and 120 watts respectively. As for the thermals, the Sapphire Pulse 7900GRE is definitely on the higher side. With GPU load temperature peaked at 78 degrees Celsius, alongside the memory junction and hotspot temperature which peaked at 96 and 89 Celsius respectively. So you might want to consider increasing the fan curve to improve the cooling performance. So from the test results, ray tracing performance is something that the RX 7900 GRE still lacks when compared to the 4070. But the situation is slowly improving right now. Raster performance is pretty okay in general and you can still take advantage of FSR3 for a quick performance boost without having to enable ray tracing at all. Like it or not, ray tracing is here to stay. But at least things are looking better for AMD with FSR3, notably the AFMF, also known as AMD Fluid Motion Frames that puts Radeon card in a much better position when competing against GeForce cards. Though that only applies to titles that actually have the feature supported as not every game has this feature, especially older titles that only has DLSS. So is the RX 7900 GRE worth getting? If you're looking mainly at best rest of performance for the money you're paying for, which I think a lot of people still do, and of course it's okay with AFMF, the RX 7900 GRE is something you can look into. And that's all for the video this time. Do give us a thumbs up if you find this video useful. Personally, I'll still go for the 4070 Super because of personal preference. But do let us know your thoughts on the 7900 GRE in the comment section down below. And I'll see you again next time.